bubblehead nurse. We. Oh. This seems to be uh, the most fascinating costume that I've made to most people. I don't know if it was a style of clothes, you know, or if it's just like the character itself. I think most people are pretty freaked out by this character. I mean, it's a zombie nurse. I love it. Brains! Ugh. I don't think the zombie nurse is a brain, so I think you just want to kill your eyes. So we got here the mask, and behind me I have the dress that I made for the nurse costume as well. Um, yeah, this dress form is a little thicker than I am, so it kind of doesn't close up appropriately, but you get the points. <sighs> Ideally, you you know, this and the films that are, you know, and all, like, theatrical quality, it'd be latex. It'd be made out of latex. It'd be a latex mask. But, for the purposes of you guys, or anyone who just wants to make from Halloween, or Comic-Con, you know, most people don't have access to latex or molds or, you know, how to make those, and they... Yeah, but for right now, this is pretty much paper mache version. And you will never be able to tell. It's pretty sweet. These are the materials that you'll need for it to make this beautiful young lady in motion. Young, old, pretty dead, it's all in. A cap or a hairnet? A plastic mask. White spray paint. Varied acrylic paints and paint brushes. Medical tape. Glue. A bowl of water. Newspaper. A measuring tape. One large balloon. So first, we're going to Start with our mask, our balloon, cap, and the medical tape. Right, using a measuring tape, measure your cord appropriately. Mainly like around your forehead or above your eyebrows, like right around here. Come on, go I like account for a little bit for all this weave on my head. Alright. Mine says 23, and I'm gonna give it about like an extra two inches just for a little space, you know. We may have like two or three inches. A little space so that the mask can, you know, calm down and, and to give a little room for any error, you know, accounts right here. So, we're going to build up our room. You have like larger balloons, you know? Unless your head is like a smurf. You don't want a bigger balloon. So we are going to fit our cap over the top. Cap on, freaking finally. And I used some tape to hold it down because this particular cap is a little slidey. Okay. Now we're gonna slip the mask over the front. And that's another thing that I am I didn't mention before uh, is if the mask because of the mask that I used for mine. The white mask that I used for my original um, nurse mask, it didn't even like have a mouth. So you're gonna want to be able to breathe, you know, with all this on. So if it's not big enough for you, you can use like an exacto knife or a scissor or you know whatever you want. Like same with the eye holes. But this mask seems pretty efficient for now, you know. 
Now we are gonna wrap the crap out of this thing with some medical tape, right? The reason I'm using medical tape is like duct tape or any regular tape. I mean, regular tape, the stickiness isn't, you know, like, like office tape. Isn't that great? Um, so yeah, the reason we're using medical tape instead of duct tape is because it reads a lot better. And you know, it's just like it's cloth. I mean, you know, we're using cloth for the majority of it for the most part. To begin with, and it's a costume. You want it to be comfortable. Start anywhere you want, you know. And we're gonna crisscross it. So we're gonna go all the way around horizontally. I say go horizontally or vertically first, whichever way, whatever floats your boat. Great. Just making our way up the hill. Now we move on to our paper mache. And we're going to take our bowl of water. Newspaper and a clip. Now, uh, our newspaper, we're gonna start ripping it up into, you know, threads. The Methuselah of glue. Old! And we are going to pour it in the water. Alright, so. We are going to bring back Mr. Green Big Head. And let the water drip off a little bit, right? So you don't want a complete mess. You should probably do this in an area that you don't mind messing up. Or at least like lay some newspaper or something under it, right? So we're going to start layering. A newspaper. You're just gonna dunk your shred of newspaper and then just lay it across the lack of any it's the hairs are two eyes still have them open Shape around the face of it. And the eyes are here, so you just you can bend the paper up a little bit and you know, just a little. Alright, so I pretty much just touched up whatever needed to be touched, any spaces that were open or anything like that, so. Now I'm going to take it outside, take it to a well-ventilated area, like outside, and we shall spray her an off white. So now we have her all spray painted up, and it's not perfect, but that's cool, you know, because we're going to paint over it uh, to give it a little more of a dead flesh look. So now we're going to give her like a zombie-like appearance flesh, right? So, we're gonna use our sponge, our paintbrush, and you can use like a scrub pad or like um like a wire, you know, mesh type pad to give it like a spongy sp uh, spattered type of appearance. So, whew. plus I'm gonna be using our like I'm gonna use acrylic paints, blacks, dark blues, um, like a burgundy red for like a dry blood look or you know kind of can give a fresh bread blood uh fresh blood look and browns uh the blacks are gonna go into the creases here so we're gonna give some depth you know we left some space open for our eyes remember so we can color that in you can't see the eyes i mean at this point it pretty much looks like bandages right so spot so let's get started with painting you're gonna want to paint in, you know, in the eye holes and any parts that have depth, cause it to recede a little bit and, and hide your eyes or any crevices that you don't want to be seen or that you want to have a little bit more 
more of a three dimension. And you're taking our sponge or you know your your wire mesh or you can start mixing the colors up to get black, red, brown, blue, and you just start stippling it. You know, you just wanna you know, and if it comes out a little too strong like that, you can dip your brush in some water and it completely dilutes. And after the paint dries and you you got the effect that you want on your face. What I did was I took some liquid latex and I, I threw I, and I mixed it up with some cotton or any other materials like little pieces of paper or anything and you just kind of like sh I strewed it along the face especially around the mouth because it gave like this you know like flesh like appearance so I'll show you on my my actual finished mask. Now the nurse cap um, it was a very simple pattern that I found, you know, online, like, or I, I usually trace my patterns by eye, but I mean, it was like so generic, like, you know, the 1940s hats kind of thing. So, yeah, and um, I stained it, same thing with the dress, um, and used my liquid latex technique with, like, just, um, you can get liquid latex at any... Halloween store, um, you know, when you get fake blood, I'm not sure if craft stores would have it, but I got mine at Halloween so you can get it online. So I mixed it up with cotton, any threads, like when I was sewing my dress for this, I mean, there was like extra thread everywhere. So I just saved it, I collected it, it was like a huge mound of excess threads and, you know, some cotton balls and just dipped it in the liquid latex and stored it all over the cap as you can see and I did the same thing to the mask after the paint was dry you know you see like I, I used the black to give some depth in where my eyes would be or my mouthpiece would be where I'd be breathing but you can also see you know there's liquid latex in there and I painted it over to give it a nastier effect but you can't even see that so I will put it in there if you'd like a tutorial of the dress, just leave me a comment and I actually might make that someday. Mm -hmm.